Hey folks, uh, this next video here is going to be upper body strength training and uh, this one we're going to work with weights. Now I'm going to grab my weights and they look a little peculiar, uh, but just remember that um, uh, you can use really anything. You can use jugs of milk, you can use cans of soup, you can use bottles of water, dumbbells. As far as what weights to use for dumbbells, it's just been my experience when I've taught these classes that people like five pounds. It's a good like um, it's a good median to go to. Some people take three pounds. Some people go you know eight pounds, ten pounds. Uh, remember that with a lot of these exercises, not just with weight training, but with most things, uh, what you can use, what what you can modify to make something more difficult or less difficult, is um, varying your speed and varying your range of motion. So if we have an exercise where you're coming up and down, well, you can always come up less, if it's especially if there's a mechanical issue, if your joint is hurting, or you can come up more, right? You can go slower or you can go faster. All of those things you can modify on your own to make it either easier or harder or what have you. I, just, I don't want the, weight, the lights to shine too bright. I'm gonna use 15 pounds uh, because the next the only other type of weights I have are 25 pounds, and that'll be a little too heavy for me. But the weights I'm going to use are Indian weighted clubs. These are about 8 kilo, about 15 pounds. These are their own kind of exercise. There's a lot of things you can do with these particular weights, similar to like a kettlebell and there are other ways that, um, you know, you can only do with these. I'm going to just grab the thick end of it. And I'm going to pretend like we're holding dumbbells here. So at the two minute mark, we'll begin, which is coming up here. I'm going to go just a few minutes. All right, here we go. Starting one, two. So you can be holding weights or a gallon of milk in each hand or water, whatever the case. Make sure, please, that as you're doing this, uh, so think about uh, point A, you know, is the grip in your hands. And point Z, you know, the final, is your abdomen, your core. So if the first point and the last point are firm, if your stomach is tight and your hands are firm, all of the points in between are going to be a little safer, namely your wrists, elbows, shoulders, your neck. Okay, now let's add some leg work to it. We're going to sit back and come up. Notice I wait until my elbows have finished coming back, and when I extend my hands back, that's when I bring my hips back. So don't think about squatting down. The knees are bending naturally as you're bringing the hips back. I recommend exhaling as your diaphragm compresses. Four, three, two, not from here. We're going to come up, back, forward, down. Keeping that belly button tucked in because you don't want to arch your back. Now, if this is a little bit difficult if there's a mechanical issue an alternative can be this forward and then a tricep extension back if you see you can stand with your feet side by side or staggered so this is your alternative or this if you want to give yourself a little more stability you can try touching the weights together give you a little bit more stable work just uh, remember especially with this one your pinky finger has to be gripping tight also because if it isn't, it can hurt your elbow. You've got 12, 11, 10, 9. Keep that belly button pulled in. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Very good. All right, arms out to the side. I'm going to squat back as I do the flies and then come up. 1 and 2. If you see, I kind of I want to keep the weights pretty much more or less the same height from the floor. I'm just bringing those arms out. If I'm doing the squat properly and I don't want my chest or my head to go past my toes. My knees can go past my toes once they get strong enough but imagine like you're standing in front of a wall. So regardless of how far down you go you should more or less you know stay kind of flat this way. Eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, and let's reel it in. Uh, spinning the wheel backwards. Adjust your stance to whatever you need. Again, remember, you need your hands gripping tight. You need your belly button tucked in. 
All right, those two points are gonna keep your elbows, shoulders, wrists, back, neck safer. Hang in there, folks, you're doing great. Belly button stays pulled in. And again, if you wanna make it more difficult, go faster or reach out further. If you wanna make it easier, go a little bit less here. You can always take a break. You can take a three to five second break every three to five seconds if you want. Just make sure your head is in the game. Don't take a mental break. At eight, seven, almost there, folks. Six, five, belly button stays pulled in. Three, two, all right, from here, squat, curl, overhead press. And as you do the overhead press, please do not lean back. So as I squat, again, I don't want my head or my shoulders to go past my toes. My knees can once they're strong enough. Imagine like there is a wooden, like the capital letter T. Imagine there's a wooden T and someone super glued it to your back so that your shoulders are flat and straight, meaning your shoulder blades, your back is straight. And as always, keep that belly button tucked in. Let's go for another 15 seconds. If you want to, you can try touching the weights at the top. If you're holding the dumbbells, you can rotate them a little bit if you want. Whatever works for you. Eight, seven, six, five, belly button pulled in. Three, two, one. Let's lean forward and squeeze those shoulder blades. And again, you can take a step back with one foot if you want. Let's keep the back of the neck relaxed. Make sure that you're feeling more of your shoulder blades as opposed to your deltoids, your shoulders themselves. Think about also using those abs, abdominals to protect that lower back. So you don't want to be arching that lower back. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, elbows back, palms up, like you're holding a tray. We're gonna go one and then the other. Make sure you're gripping tight. How far out, how far up, how fast is up to you. Just keep that in mind. You make it harder or easier when I'm demonstrating. Just gotta make sure that it's correct. Keep in mind, your back of the neck has to be relaxed. No stressing, no tightening up. You have 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 seconds, belly button pulled in. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Point those palms back. Let's tilt your body forward and let's pulse. You can also step back with one hand or with one foot. I mean, shoulders down, chest forward. Don't arch your back. Keep that belly button tucked in. Keep those fingers tight. You've got 12, 11, working the forearms, triceps, and upper back. Six, sorry, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Almost done here, folks. Let's come out to the side, back down. Let's come forward back down. You can go higher or faster if you want to, or you can keep it low. You can keep it short. No big deal. Keep a firm uh, grip with those fingertips though. Even the pinky finger. You've got 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and this is our last one. So we're gonna come up, down, open, up, down, close. You can take a foot step behind you, so to stagger your stance if you want to, or just have your feet side by side. And again, keep that belly button tucked in. Keep the back of the neck relaxed. You can raise your arms higher if you want to, or you can just go a little bit here. You've got 12, 11, 10, Nine, if you're losing control, slow it down. Six, five, four, three, two, relax. Let's go ahead and put the weights down. And let's do just a really quick stretch. Swing those arms out, take a couple of deep breaths. Relax the back of your neck. As you're exhaling, exhale that stress, kind of will your body to relax. 
relax your neck. Let's go ahead and interlock your fingers behind your back. Extend those arms back as you drop your shoulders down. Let the chest go forward. Relax the back of the neck. Take a deep breath in. Exhale and reverse the position. Turn yourself into a question mark. Tuck that tailbone in, round out the small of your back. Relax the back of the neck. Separate the shoulders from the spine. Okay, get your feet nice and wide. Let's come up and over. Get your feet as wide as they need to be in order for your hips to feel centered and balanced. You wanna feel the stretch from the elbow down to your hip. Relax the back of the neck. Keep that belly button tucked in. When you come up, you can grab either the wrist or the elbow. Relax that shoulder, relax the back of the neck. Every time you breathe out, just visualize the stress leaving. It works. Take that same arm, bring it across, hug it close. Relax as you exhale. Okay, reach up and over the other way. Again, from your elbow down to your hip, but the back of the neck needs to be loose. Keep that belly button tucked in. Oh, circuits like this, and get your metabolism going. Your heart has to find different ways. Let's come up, hold here, or here. Your heart has to find different ways of fueling your body because different parts are working more than others. Your core has to keep adjusting. Your abdominals have to keep adjusting to how they support your body position and the move. Let's go ahead and bring that arm across, hug it close, relax that shoulder as you breathe out. That's all kind of increases your athletic IQ a little bit. And, you know, lean muscles burn fat. That's how it works, building density in those muscles. Let's do one more stretch just in case you started to tighten up your lower back as you were doing this. Let's crisscross our feet, toes pointed in, heels pointed out like a triangle. Bring those hips back. Be careful not to hyperextend that back knee. Bring the hips back and then relax your lower back. As you breathe out, again, visualize those muscles opening up. Just again, be careful not to hyperextend that knee. And you should feel that stretch go up the back leg, maybe into the back hip and the sciatic nerve area near the kidney. Slowly, slowly come up. Don't rush because you don't want to pull with that lower back. Switch the other way, other leg in front. Bring those hips back and then relax down. Now you could have taken two to three pound dumbbells and gone nice and slow with short range on this workout and have it be a safe way to train. Or you could have taken heavy weights or just maybe moderate weights but go super fast and make it almost like a cardio conditioning, you know, high intensity interval training, slowly come up. That part is up to you. But the sequence I like, the sequence of exercises is something that gets a lot of things moving at the same time and has good long-lasting effects. All right, folks, you all have a good one.